Hey everybody, Coach Kasim here at the N1 HQ in Colorado, where I have put together three of the Prime Fitness Prodigy racks. Now, that is the Plate Loaded Prodigy rack, the Select Rise Prodigy rack, as well as the Plate Loaded Single Stack Prodigy rack. So having gone through the installation of all three of those, I put together some of my tips to help your installation go as smoothly as possible. Now with my installation, I was installing some options as well, including the height adjustment and the pull-up bar. So if you have those, make sure you pay attention for the tips of those so that you don't have to take parts off and then put parts back on as part of your installation process. The first tip, which I wish I would have known myself, is have someone to help you. This is probably a two-person job or it should be a two-person job. There are two physically demanding portions of this install and that's gonna be actually getting it out of the crate, like getting the large pieces and then standing up the sides. And that's because the sides are gonna come pretty much bundled together in that crate. So it's a quite heavy and slightly awkward piece to get out of that crate. And then you assemble that whole side on the floor and you'll have to stand that up and then get your first piece connected so it can be balanced. So definitely you wanna have a second person for those parts of the installation. My third tip, and this is another one that I wish I would have known early, is that the instructions are in the bottom of the crate. So when you start unwrapping that, don't start you know, taking bolts off and pieces off. Take the plastic off and then find the instructions because the instructions are actually gonna help you understand in what order to start disassembling the crate and taking the parts out. And that will save you a ton of grief in terms of getting those things out efficiently and not scratching up your rack or doing more physical work than you need to just to get the rack out of the crate. My second tip is to make sure you have enough space to work. So when you go to assemble these racks, you're gonna to need to be able to lay out those pieces on the floor and you're gonna to need to be able to assemble that side laying down on the floor. So if you think of the rack laying on its side, you need at least that much space so that you can get that assembled and then stand it up. Even better if you have enough room to get both sides assembled on the floor and then be able to stand them up one at a time from there. And that leads me into tip number four, which is take your time disassembling the crate and getting your rack out of the crate, right? There's lots of bolts and stuff that are holding things together and you're gonna wanna take that out in an organized fashion. Each side of the rack is held together with plastic wrap and plastic bolts. That means there's gonna be two uprights, top and bottom, and the cable system are all connected. So this is the bulkiest, heaviest piece and it's gonna be held together by a bunch of temporary parts in the crate. You don't wanna be disassembling the pieces that are holding that together before you get it out of the crate. You wanna take it out of the crate with all of those temporary parts holding it together so that it is as least awkward as possible. You get it to your destination and then you can disassemble it on the floor. You're going to disassemble and lay out the side section on the floor. I suggest that you leave the pulleys wrapped in the plastic. That will keep the pulley system from being such an obstacle because you won't have the extra cable to deal with and it will keep that middle pulley section more secure. You're gonna wanna lay out the side so that it's in the orientation that you will stand it up in. That way you can assemble it and stand it right up. The back side of the post is the only thing that's side specific, so it has a little foot that is gonna stick out on the side of the rack sideways. This is the only difference between the left and right sides. Make sure the parts are all facing the right direction. Make sure the cable is not twisted or tangled before you start assembling your side pieces. If you are installing a height adjustment, I suggest you do it while you have the side on the floor so you can install that pulley mount here. You just need to know how much of that height adjustment that you want to use, whether you're gonna use the five inch or the 10 inch setting. So we'll refer to the instructions for the height adjustment and go ahead and put that piece on now so you don't have to do it when the rack is standing up. Once you stand up the side and position it, secure the lower crossbar, or if you are doing a single stack, attach the support leg. It's best if someone can help you balance the side while you're securing the lower support. If you're doing the single stack by yourself, lightly secure one support leg so that you can attach the other leg and secure them both together. If you're installing the single stack, this is where you should grab your level and adjust the balancing feet so that it is balanced and secure. For the full racks, you'll attach the other side to the bottom support and then you will proceed with attaching the top supports. If you have the pull-down attachment, don't attach the front support and attach your pull-down attachment instead. 
The easiest way to install the guide rods is to install them at an angle and then slide the plates on and then the weight carriage, whether that be for the select rise or the carriage assembly for the plate loaded version. When you're installing the carriage over the guide rods, make sure you be mindful of the small plastic washer bearings that go over the guide rod because you can very easily knock these out while you're trying to install it, especially if you don't get it right the first time. One of the more difficult steps was installing the carriage correctly without getting the cables tangled. So you need to pay attention to how the cables are coming down and make sure the carriage is not twisted and none of the cables are wrapped around the guide rods when you install that carriage on top of the guide rod. Once the carriage is installed, you can take the plastic off the end pulleys that's holding the extra cable together and release the extra cable. For those of you that have installed the height adjustment, you will have to disconnect the back cable and then you'll have to rerun that cable through the height adjustment and then back down. So this cable is gonna go from where your height adjustment is to the back of the rack, then to the bottom of the rack, and then back up. If you're using the five inch height increase, you should not need to use the spacers on the bottom pulley, but you will need to adjust the screw for the back pulley so that you have the right amount of cable slack. If you're not installing a height adjustment, you can just adjust the pulley tension at the front as needed. If you got the selectorized version, I suggest you do all of your cable adjustments before installing the weight shield, even though in the instructions it has you installing that weight shield first, you'll have a lot more room to work. So I would say the last thing that you do in this installation is install the weight shield, because once you do that, you lose a lot of room to work. In terms of tools, you're gonna to want a drill or an impact driver of some sort to help you disassemble the crate, as well as a hammer or a pry bar. But then when you get to the actual installation, yes, you're gonna still wanna have like that drill nut driver or impact driver so that you can save a lot of time and you're not ratcheting everything, but you will still need a ratchet. So you probably will need you know, your, your drill set, a ratchet, and a wrench, because there's just a couple places in the install where you're likely not gonna be able to fit your drill, so you're gonna to need to use a ratchet and a wrench to secure the nut and bolt during those port or in those tight spaces. The other thing is you will probably want a ladder at some point in time to install the crossbars. Unless you're very, very tall um, or there's two of you that are very, very tall installing this, it will be definitely beneficial to at least let, have a ladder, step ladder for one person when you are installing those top supports. Lastly, you will need a Phillips screwdriver to secure the top of the guide rods. And if you got the selectorized version, you will need that to install your weight shield as well. All in all, if you follow the instructions right and you follow these tips, you should have a smooth installation and a beautiful rack when you are done.